33 Tom trailers are on fire. They have a little burn pile though. There's a couple piles. They're on fire back here. Jump 33. I like to serve people. We can lessen their pain in any way whatsoever. You know, whether it's a fire, a medical assist, anything like that. The other thing that keeps me motivated is the people, the the members of the fire company. They, you know, they're they're a great bunch of people, and like I said before, it's like a family. We're serious at times, but we have a lot of fun too. That's makes it good. They're definitely a second family. Um, you have to go into the assumption that they're going to have your back and you're going to have theirs. So. Um, Maybe more so than family, they become your best friends. Um, and, you know, every night we're here, like you've seen, it's, they're joking around. They're, you know, everyone knows everything about each other just because they trust each other. Once you knew their names, you were the same as it is ever since. You know, kind of welcomed you in and that was it. You were in. I've made a lot of friends from the firehouse. Um, a lot of people who are pretty much like family now. Um, I feel like when you do come down here and we train and yes, like we joke and pick at each other, but, um, it's nice knowing that like when I go on a call, I'm comfortable going to these people because of being so new, having questions. I don't, um, I don't feel discouraged having those questions, especially in the middle of a scene, going up to somebody, any of them and asking, Hey, how do I do this? Or I'm really nervous to do this. Can you help me through it? When push comes to shove, like they have your back no matter what. The training requirements are a lot more extensive now. Back when I joined, you came back here, they handed you a helmet and a, a coat, and they said, when we get there, we'll tell you what to do and, and just do it. Now there is all this different kind of training that you're expected to know. You have to know a lot of first aid because we run a lot of medical assist calls. Almost a third of our calls in a year's time are medical assist. you got to know what you're doing or you're going to be an, an impediment to helping the EMS team that's there. Um, you have to know about hazardous materials because there's so much funky stuff out there that could hurt you. There's just so much more that you need to know before you can do a lot of these things that they didn't teach 
30 years ago. We do a lot of our training in-house here. Uh, Matt Schultz is, does all the, he's the training officer, as the captain, and we do a lot just right here because sometimes the mods, they have to travel a distance. Putting a pack on and breathing air and timing it to make sure I can get it on quick enough um, and breathing air fast enough. Um, going through the maze down in the club basement, um, going through the maze with it filled with like fog and smoke um, from our fog machine. So that way the visibility is like what it would be like if it was an actual fire. I definitely don't like heights. So um, my training on like you were able to see like climbing up a ladder onto a roof the first time just stepping off a ladder onto a roof was terrifying for me but um now I'm more comfortable I can hop on and off no problems if I have any hesitancy whatsoever or um like the roof is steep like I'm the first one to say like I'm gonna send someone else to that because I'm just I'm afraid of heights I'm not gonna be able to do my job properly um but that's probably the only thing that's really kept me from, like, I'll do the training for sure because I know it's going to be safe. But when it comes to going to a fire, I'm going to let someone else go and do it. There's a couple of ways you can handle it financially. Either the fire company can pay the bill or the Fireman's Relief Association. Uh, we just had CPR, and there was, there was quite a few that took it, and that was $45 a person. Every block party. It's kind of all of it. The people coming to support you, but then on the member side, how we can joke around and have a good time and still better ourselves. We start our planning in uh, somewhere around January for our carnival. It's usually the last week of June, and we moved it up a little bit this year. But uh, we have a volunteer committee, a chairman, and... Uh, volunteers we do a it's a five dollar raffle ticket and there's a cash prizes that they draw at the end of the carnival and then there's uh we send letters out and we get donations from the businesses also so all in all you know we get, do fairly well on it but it, it all depends on the rain the weather the weather can affect it terribly you know, you spend a lot of money, you book a good band, they show up at rains, and you still have to pay them. Over the years, because we have a small town, you know just about everybody, which means invariably when you get a call, you're probably going to know maybe better and some others, but in any case, you're going to at least know the family of the people that are involved and you want to be able to help them the best you can. The way I sum it up is that people in this town, if they're calling 911, they're wanting us to help them in some way. They're calling us and we're showing up at their home or wherever they're at, at probably what amounts to the worst time in their life. And we are trying to do something to try and solve whatever their problem is. If their house is on fire or if their basement's flooded or if they're in a wreck and they're trapped in a car, they're expecting you to be able to do something. The only time I really knew somebody was in a car wreck, she was fine. It was just, hey, I know you, kind of deal. Um, you just deal with it. If you know somebody and it's bad, just step back. There's a million other things to do in the scene. Step back, go find something else to do, go direct traffic. You know, don't cause more of a problem, and you'll be fine. I don't forget what night it was, but I was sitting at my my desk and the sirens and the pager go off, and when I read the address, I said, this is only doors from my house. And, uh, of course, grabbed my radio and went out the door, and the flames were out in the middle of Main Street. And when I got out there, evidently an oxygen tank, when they get so hot, they vent and release the oxygen. And one of them went off, and it was the most intense fire I think I've ever seen. There was four apartments in that building, and uh, the lady that passed away was on the downstairs, 
her daughter and grandson were on the second floor. They jumped out the back window. And then in the other side of them, the lady was on the first floor, her and the uh, upstairs tenant, you know, they got out right away. One of the reactions that I have seen many times over the years, and nobody else can describe it to you unless they've experienced it, is when you come rolling up on somebody's house and they have a problem and they're standing at the front door or on the porch, whatever, and they see you pull up and jump out and you see that sense of relief on their face that, oh, thank God they're here. They're going to make this all right. And you get that satisfaction of knowing that you just helped somebody at the worst possible time in their life and made things better for them so that it's not the worst time for them anymore. That's a very satisfying feeling. We do this volunteer, which means we never get paid a dime for this, but to me, that is payment enough. I love the fact that you can go do something for somebody in that type of situation based on the training that you have, the equipment that you have, and your ability to work as a, a team to get a goal accomplished that helps them out. Twenty-five, thirty years ago, there were over 300,000 volunteer firefighters in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It's down to below 50,000 now. I would encourage anybody that views this or listens to it, that whatever community that you're in, if you want to help your community and you want to share some of your time with your community in order to help people. Consider joining your local fire department. Take the training, learn how things work, learn what to do, and help others do that because it's such a satisfying feeling to do that. Mm -hmm.